when you give a live presentation, these things kind of happen. Well, thank you much for the presentation. We do work as intelligence analysts, in this case in telecommunications, working on cyber intelligence and doing research on cyber security. And we're here today to introduce from a practical point of view, we're going to install it, we're going to configure it, we're going to use it, we're going to use the framework that we usually work with and that we devote a lot of our free time. We wanted the speech to be participatory, so we have candy here, so if we have a question and you raise your hand, you'll get some candy to encourage participation. We're going to buy you somehow. Well, let's begin with the framework and with the analysis methodologies. And also, regarding the information we can obtain with the profiles on the network, how we can exploit it and how a third party can have a lot more information that we think on ourselves. So this is the outline we have for today's speech and we need to be aware of the fact that in, on the network we publish a lot of information and once it's out there, it's there forever. And that's information we give out for free and there's a saying that it says that when you don't need to pay for something you are the product. In the, on the, in the social networks there's a lot of this and in fact monitoring some platforms doesn't really need to be so complex in fact, there are already agreements internationally e between public and international bodies with the most well-known social media such as NSA and Facebook here, but and the NSA have worked with other companies such as Yahoo, Google, there have been some scandals, after all there's no publications and we have seen that all these things really ha do happen and there are other approaches such as obtaining information sort of passively looking at what is being published in a more aggressive and offensive way which is what happens with the hacking team here and the bad guys already know these agreements done by social networks and other companies with government organisms so they try to use mechanisms for anonymization on the internet or using anonymous networks being located in fora protected by usernames and passwords or by crawling they also acquire low price tools in underground mar markets and they also do communication through systems where the crawling makes processing that information more complex so we often do attributions on the network and we look at the kind of threats that do happen and we attribute them to some users on the network so we would like to ask for your collaboration to see with which information inputs does a researcher use on the network at the beginning so from, that, from an input which information can I get to relate it afterwards and to get to a conclusion and here the network can take place in two directions from the network we can try to identify someone real underlying and that may be complex because sometimes we cannot reach a particular conclusion and also the other way around we may have one someone who did something like a crime or some sort of extortion or that it was committed in some sort of fraud or was involved in some fraud and we want more information regarding the networks where they are but first of all, we need to know about the kind of information we can have on one person to start looking. Let's raise our hands. What can we think of? Their approach, their location. Okay, their location. Up here. An IP address. We could have an IP address. So, location, IP address, a MAC address. Okay here what time what time they got connected well anyhow we all need a, a reward but 
IP address, MAC address, location. But there are many more simple things. When someone sells some product that we may consider suspicious, yes. Email, good. Emails, yeah, someone is raising their hand up there, but emails are interesting. Why? As we'll see next throughout this session, they allow us to establish solid relationships. And with an email, we can check whether that email has been registered on Skype. Sometimes we don't notice, but the information is published on Skype. And it gives us a lot of personally interesting information. We can register, for example, on Twitter. We can check whether an email has registered an account at some point in time, some point in time, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. And emails allow us to establish solid relationships. Okay. I'm going up there in a minute. PayPal or credit card? Okay, we have get PayPal or credit card, that'd be great. Phone numbers. PayPal, phone numbers, good. Well done. And we actually have tools to get information on phone numbers. I was gonna say credit information. Wow. When we do research sometimes we have less clear information, but something didn't come up. Well, navigation habits. Good too, but that kind of information to do research in open source is not that useful because it's difficult to find information on the network. But there are some platforms that are said when the user connected last or which users are online or some fora. Yes, let's talk about connections. Something important is missing here. Usernames. Yes. No candy here? Username back there? Usernames. Why are they interesting? Why are usernames interesting? Well, I guess that many of us have accounts in many social networks. Who has a Facebook account? Well, I don't. Mine doesn't count. Who has a Twitter account? Come on, we have more Twitter accounts. Who has a LinkedIn account? Who has an Instagram account? I don't. Who uses in some of these networks the same username? See? Well, here we are. Why? Why do we use the same username? Because it's easy to remember. Well, if I register and I publish on Twitter, I publish with my username. Now, when I go to Instagram, I want that someone who saw my Twitter username associates me quickly. Of course. But that approach eventually can also be used to search other profiles in other platforms. And that's what one of these tools will do that we have in the framework. Do we have more information around the room? Okay. There are so many hands being raised. We'll run out of candy. Now we have a lot of candy. So, images from the person, and why are they useful? That's great, yes. We're making things a bit more complex than we will, but... When we have a profile on social media, we're interested in identifying that that person is the person who who he or she claims to be. If we can see a picture at a party or smiling, whatever, we can identify the person. What else? More hands that are being raised? Metadata. Yes, metadata. Metadata about the documents. The documents being published. I didn't give you any candy, did I? Metadata of the documents being published on the web. Actually, a couple of years ago, Twitter and Facebook didn't use to take metadata out of the images, but it seems that that has changed. What else? I'm out of breath. I'll replace you, don't worry. Okay, what else? 
spoilers. Up there, there's a hand raised up there. Okay, location IP max. Yes. Around here, phone numbers. Phone numbers and great information. Contacts and personal relations. Yes, because we identify on in Instagram accounts and profiles that also appear, and friends that also appear on a Twitter account. We can start to confirm the original relationship we have. So, personal relationships. My handwriting is really bad. I'm sorry. What else? Companies where they've worked. Great. Companies. Location, IP, Mac, connection time, emails. We haven't said it, but we have yet another interesting element. Some emails are located somewhere because they have a TD. Is not the same thing. Domains, yeah. It's not the same, the same thing having a Gmail or having a personal domain. And the location, yes. For the emails, you also have an alias. Alias slash a, alias at domain. So we can get more information. Another additional username. What else? I'll try not to forget anything. We apologize, no microphone is being used. Yes, password recovery, exactly. Where does this come from? I don't know that you're aware about how Paris Hilton's account was hacked. It was like, whatever, whatever, Paris Hilton at Outmail or at Outlook.com. And someone had the bright idea of saying, okay, I'm gonna recover the password and look at the password recovery questions. So the question was, what's my dog's name? And I think the dog's name was like Tinkerbell or something like that. That was a name that everybody knew because it appeared in the media. So that secret in question was not secret, it's public. You can even find it on Wikipedia. So they recovered that password and they had access to certain personal items of Paris. But I don't know whether you're aware of the fact that that information, whenever you do password recovery in Gmail, Twitter, if someone does it for you, you don't get a notification. And they're giving information on you. And we'll see that in particular examples about me. And if I, if I get hacked, let's see. But password recovery, personal information, many things here. Anything else? IP, IP addresses, telephone numbers, great information. Well, if we have the great information, we're really getting the guy. Metadata, personal relationships, password recovery, companies, images, usernames. We even had more things than we were planning to to mention in the following slide. Okay, this is what we mentioned. We just gave a few hints, but you covered most things. Bitcoin addresses. Now that Bitcoin is being used a lot. Some sort of next union could be made. And for the analyst, they need to join all those links that we mentioned to get to a conclusion and decide whether they can know who did that in the network. Okay. So we're going to present our framework in this presentation. It's called OSR Framework, Open Sources and Research Framework. Just in case you were wondering, that's where OSR comes. Next time we do this kind of product, we'll call it PEPA, for example. Something more simple, but our objective, our aim, is to cover all these inputs and information you've mentioned, but let's not fool ourselves. Some people are already doing these kind of things and looked for users on the network. So here, let's see how far do these platforms go and we'll compare ourselves with them. We'll compare our tool. The first platform is called Namecheck. 
want to see his name check. We're going to see this. Do you know name check? Does any of you know name check? No candy given for this answer, but name check allows you to check usernames. It also has an API. The objective is to look for Felix. The objective here is to see where Felix Durezzo registered. I think we have 88 platforms there. Okay, let's. It's actually thinking. But it's. It will check whether that username is present or has been registered on Twitter, YouTube, Blogger, Instagram. And whoever uses that will be exposed here. But if you don't use the same username, that may happen sometimes, this platform wouldn't give you any option to do several requests. But here, sometimes we may have someone in the real world and we don't know anything about them. We just know that they're called Felix Brezzo. So what can we do to identify Felix Brezzo network here? So we can actually identify the candidates. But here on green, we see the platforms where the user is available. And in red, the platforms where the user is hidden. So our platform analysis is doing some searches on the surface. And those platforms are not even protected by username and password whenever we register. But when it comes to doing requests to check if those users exist, and a login is requested, a platform such as this one is limiting that information because it wouldn't even support the source. We insist on the fact that sometimes we lose the control on the surface web and deep web. We like saying that deep web is not everything that is in Tor. Okay, whatever is in Tor is not indexed by conventional, search, by conventional browsers, but the content of a forum that can be accessed by a username and password, that part cannot be indexed by a normal browser because Google doesn't go to photo coaches, create a username and a password to index that private content for coaches or the Tor forum, who make things more complex, Tor private forum. And due to that, precisely, we don't like associating deep web to Tor. We tend to say that in the platforms where we need to use password and, and username at deep web, and on this platform when you do a lot of queries, you need to pay. It's not very expensive. Yes, but maybe a report may cost 100 euros. So if we want to do 1,000 requests, we will need to pay for it. Okay. Here we have another tool called Peak. Here you get a notice. Yes, please believe us. He searches in our platforms. Most platforms where he does requests are on the surface web. The results are free. We also have Jasmine does requests to surface sources. We also have free results, and then people allows us to do searches in eight platforms. These sources are from surface platforms, and the results are free. Here we have a, a summary of all of these platforms in the form of a table and we can see that of the four name check is perhaps the one that mm, supports more sources except for people it's they're not going to let me do a search on using emails only peak and people are going to do it using phone numbers and and except for name check i'm not going to be able to integrate it with other tools 
None of them supports platforms with a username and a password. None of them will uh, allow, uh, allow us to obtain more information, for example, if I'm interested in a specific source. And none of them are free software. So, well, at the end of the presentation, we'll see how we've uh, collaborated with these platforms. Well, we have two kinds of approaches for the identification of users. We have usify, depending uh, as we call it, usify, or and that's the search for usernames, the existence or not of a username on different platforms. And the first of the two, which we can see there, which is the user enumeration. What we do here is well, to use a vulnerability. I don't know whether I would call it in the un. Um, vulnerability, but in other words, if we took look at what's in the URL, we can, well, it, well, it asks the user, we're going to go to the website in this case, and the username, but in any case, when we have enumeration, what are we talking about? Well, we're going to, well, let's have a look, we can connect, let's see the video, we can't connect yet. So what's the enumeration? Well, the analysis, the analyst would be enumerating all of the users in a forum, in a network, on a platform, and from where? Well, from the ID. So we would be, we would see how Girish Junecha has these particular things uh, associated, but we could be, well, if we get to six million, well, in that way, we would be storing that idea associated, idea, sorry, associated to that user and the characteristics associated with that user. And you might ask, well, you may be wondering, but many of the platforms don't have mechanisms. Well, they don't allow all of that information to be obtained and stored. And with the forum, it's pretty much the same when you register on a forum. They assign you a username because it's easier for the program. And it's in most of the engines, that's the way. And that's the way that the numbers increase. increase. In Facebook, it was the same, number one, number two, number three didn't exist, but number four turns out to be somebody who's got quite a lot of uh, money. Five is Chris Hughes. But this can be done in Facebook. Well, I think in Facebook, they established in the end some kind of a, additional mechanism, so it made it impossible. They couldn't download the entire thing. And I can't remember exactly. Well, in we have... A, tool which is called enumeration.py and we're looking at the structure here of the URL where we ha we are forcing that idea so we're talking about a launch of the script facebook.com slash zero one two three four and storing all of that information in order to be able to consult it at a local level later on. The ones that know programming would do this in a much more elegant way. If you do this with threads and such, like if you distribute it through different servers, well, it would be even better. But as you can see as a proof of concept, well, here we have an example. And there were platforms, including Foro Coches, amongst others. Yes, these are all of the platforms that we have um, supported within the framework. And without well, the same as we saw before. It's indexing the content of Facebook.com. Okay, well, that's the uh, look at enumeration of users. So rather than having an alias and different websites, what we can do is we can ha do queries through the platform to download at a local level the whole sequence or the list of users that they have. As we said before, this this can be done above all with the forums, the small theme-based forums which are smaller and it can be done quite easily. Uh, well maybe we can see a few more examples but if we look at Yusufi, Yusufi, 
uh, here we're talking about them being connected to those platforms and the information is associated with the user. What we do is we launch the tool so you can see it, but the approximation or the approach is what we're going to see. So we connect. We can connect to John Wayne in Facebook. Facebook.com slash John Wayne. And we have the same request. We're going to see if there's a John Wayne that exists. It's Twitter.com slash John Wayne. Instagram slash John Wayne. Because that way all of the users can exchange their URLs their, and they can have access to profiles in a much more natural way. And here we've got another one. This is a little bit different in this case because the pastebin ones have a slightly different, they have a slash U. But you can see the idea if we have something below which we store, in which we store the URL or the pattern of the URLs of the profiles, then we can easily set this up. And if we do it well, why not for six platforms or 220? And this is what we have in this case. Well, I've got it installed, but afterwards we're going to see if somebody wants to install the tool to be able to do queries of this kind, then, you know, we'll, ha we'll be pleased to help. As you can see how easy it is. Well, this is a command line interface. And then people say, oh, it would be good to have it with the engines, but well, yes, absolutely. Absolutely right. We've got usify.py. Uh, let's do the test just with Twitter, I think, here today. But our platform, well, our tool does queries on 220. But here we have minus M. We're going to look for Felix. Felix. Let's see if it doesn't take too long. We've got Cyber Camp. That's something that we we uh, put in last night, I think. And if we're lucky in the internet and the connection lets us, well, we can see. Well, well, we could take this to an Excel. We can see that with the URL on the left, Twitter.com/slash/Febreso with an alias, and um, we've got this the code because it's got the um, accent. Well, let's try, we're going to try and do a search uh, for Felix in GitHub or in Facebook or in Instagram. Well, I think more or less you can guess, you can get an idea of the system. And what we're doing here is what we saw in a manual way so when originally you didn't have tools to do it in an automatic way, well, you know, you just look for this username here, I'm going to look for it in Facebook, I'm going to look for them in Twitter, I'm going to look for them in Instagram. Well, if it's a username and that's a simple, well, you know, it would be great to get the ma machine to do it. And then if they exist, I can take a closer look. So here we've got, that's the Facebook. I actually cancelled that account. No. But the... The error is that that well, account existed in the past. Okay, so we've got Twitter, GitHub, and Facebook. No, in XLS, it's already there by default. We've got it there. Okay. In that case, we'll go straight to the results, and we can export this into many other formats. Right now, we have it ODS, XSL, and JSON. And that's even easier because you can start to work with it. And we also have, well, for three or four months, we've had it on GML. If you want to include it in some kind of uh, viewing tool for graphics, well, it's like, like I said. Uh, okay, I couldn't see it. OSR framework. We're going to go to the results folder. And. Here we can see all of the requests that we have made for the username that we want to consult. A question that people often ask us is if whether you're using the app of Twitter or Facebook. No, here we've got Twitter 
dot com slash and the username afterwards. Why? Well, that's because it means we can do it with a whole load of additional platforms. I don't know whether we would dare to launch another one now. Let's have a look. One of the platforms in that we look on is Skype. And Yaitha is going to use her account because what we do is we use the Skype appy. You have to accept a disclaimer. We minimize that. Well, now you're exposed. Okay, I think in Windows it takes around 40 seconds, depending on the network, and in 40 seconds or so, it monitors the, the what we have. And what we do, we go to the wrappers, wrappers file, or folder. Some of them begin to fo be belong to blogs, forum, eBay, Feminina, Facebook, hear the analysts, depending on the threat that they're kind to, trying to detect, they would have to identify the sources which are of greatest interest. I mean, I'm not going to monitor the whole of Internet if I know that it's just two or three, four uh, which are important to me. We've got a th some for buying and selling drugs or suspicious products and platforms also for adults, you know, for adult contact, Russian Chinese platforms, above all Chinese platforms when we're researching into uh, fraud um, or forgery of mobile applications. I mean, in China we're really mm, limited because obviously with the language to start with because we don't uh, speak Chinese and when it comes to carrying out additional research or investigation uh, well it gets blocked straight away okay well we'll leave it because it depends sometimes on the speed of the network it's doing 32 queries on 32 threads and that can be changed depending or configured differently depending on the power of the machine in question so we may come back to that. This is the example we wanted to show you. But it's the same thing we're doing in an example with Menospil. We're exporting it to ODS XSL amongst others. And well, we'll see because I'll see if that one works. But here we have the distribution of the kind of platforms that we have, which are integrated. Like Felix said, there most of them social or professional or opinion-based platforms. But we also have hacking platforms and Bitcoin economy, adult platforms, activism. Yes, because it's not the same to identify a user on B Contact, for example, compared to identifying them on Foro Coches, Hacker.net. So, and we'll see this when we look at the wrappers, and we hopefully will be able to see one in situ because it's very quick. We mm, label them because if we want to do a search according to platforms, then we can have users according to where they appeared, and that way we have a better classification. So what are the pros and cons of these approaches that we've shown you? Well, above all, the user enumeration, because we're going to be able to do backward monitoring about everything that's been published on the network and the status and any changes and their development over time. On the other hand, we know that we would need a great deal of storage capacity in order to be able to support all of the platforms that we would like to uh, look at. And with uh, Usify, we're going to have results straight away from investigation, but we're not going to be able to do that investigation in a backward uh, investigation. De sorry, in a backward direction, as we would be able to with the user enumeration. Okay, we can use a Python of GitHub or GitHub, but we also have a script on our website, and we can uh, download it. This URL, we uh, 
Well, let's see. While we're writing, here we go. If we, if you access this URL, you can download the script. I think we can do it right now. Actually, we'll do it right now. We can do it in situ. Well, the problem that it has to, it has to load. Well, it's this script is to be executed, and if we look at the Git, GitHub uh, page. Okay, here we have the page, we have the details on the screen, and in this case, well, what with this file, what we have are all of the instructions in order to, um, that to download it and install it for Windows. In Windows, what we have to be careful with is, well, it's something that well, they ask us, I think, sometimes we've had requests about the environment variables because it's not that if, if you're not very familiar with Python, you have to configure it in order to be um, able to execute it. And then in an additional way, uh, as an optional element, we have the transforms of Maltego. So they call in behind, they call the scripts and they visualize the results in Maltego. And uh, this is a bit user friend more user friendly, yes, but the problem is that sometimes when we do investigation, if we click the button and we start to get, you know, three hundred results, then we're not going to have another three hundred skips underneath them because we start to lose the meaning or, or the the idea of, you know, where we where we are. So uh, if you're familiar with these systems or Linux systems as well. We can install the dependencies and refresh. If we want to do this in order to develop new wrappers, as we'll see later on, what we have to do is clone from the repository of GitHub. And we've got uh, Python setup py build, uh, Python setup py install. And what's important here is how we transfer the information from the tools that are searching using the username, username and the ones that are searching using emails according to telephone numbers or credit cards. But also we're looking for information that hasn't been included here. We've, did we not put it here? Names and surnames. Well, we'll write that down. Names and surnames. The information structures, how they're, they're passed between different tools. Well, right now we do it with a JSHOP with three basic types for each element. We've got attributes, type, and value. The value could be, for example, the URL of the profile in question. The type will be whether it's a URL or an email. And the attributes could be other elements, just like with the previous ones. And with, since all of the tools share that structure, we can use it in the same file, the same uh, investigation or project uh, for all of them. And as we saw before, all of the data could be exported to CSV, XLS, XLSX, ODS, GML, or JSON in order to be able to do queries. And on the other hand, often, we're, well, we talked about this earlier, we're not going to find a username straight away, and we're going to be doing Surface. So often we're talking about users, but we have to find that username somehow. Well, we're going to start off with names and surnames, sorry, and somehow we have to be able to get down to the username. So within the framework, we have a tool which combines all of the name, surname, characteristics associated to that username and to have different possible usernames which may be used by that person. For example, what kind of changes can we have? What's most useful? 
or mas most usual, sorry, here when it comes to generating aliases. Uh, on the basis of names, a name and surname, I've got sweets here. Date of birth is an element which often we do include when we find a profile. Felix Brethel, 1987, well, that's possible, but you might find it from 1969. You might think, well, he's just playing around, but often we're not too original because people aren't always original, so we use our date of birth when the name and surnames already exist. Okay, and what else? What other elements can we introduce? Initials and surname, okay, so it will be F, and a possible uh, candidate alias could be F Brethel, mm -hmm, that's a possibility. What else, what other transformations do we have? They're talking about changing letters for numbers, so instead of using Felix, it could be a one and a three. That's another alternative, that's a possibility for uh, generating aliases. Name, um, underscore, surname, and that's, uh, we've got the name and the surname, those are the first ones we use, so, uh, so you've got Felix Brethel, but or we could have Felix underscore Brethel. So the first letter of the surname, the first letter of the first name. Okay. Or the second surname, like in Spain there are two surnames, or the town where they live. The city the language, the, the football club. Sometimes we include the football club. Uh, you know, if we support Atlético de Bilbao, well, we might include that. What else could be used to generate uh, candidate aliases? And the fact that someone's uh, got celi celiac disease. Well, why not? Nosotros tenemos incluido. We've included uh, quite a few here, and in fact, we've got a, a little uh, cheat sheet here. We've got the date of birth, uh, we had the underscores, the dots. We can't use them, for example, in Twitter. In Twitter, you can't use a dot as your alias. If you want to separate the terms, it has to be with an underscore. Um, what else? What else could we got on this cheat sheet? Name and surname. I mean, all of these elements aren't absolute certain links. If the name is unusual, perhaps, but in my case, if it's not my name, it could be my father or my grandfather. But if I was called Javier Garcia or Francisco Fernandez, you know, there would be a whole load of them. Or Gonzalo Gon Gomez, for example. There could be a whole load. But in any case, we do have to have some kind of tool. Since if we have an alias and a name and a surname, we can start those searches to look at where we have intersections with other platforms. Here we have an approach which looks at this and we're talking about many different interactions, there's several hundred I think, and this is going to be Interesting. And another tool that we've included in the framework is the Entify, where we have, if we have a lot of documents or a folder with documents, we can um, uh, find entities in order not to have to look at all of the documents and say, this one's interesting, this one's not. So with these uh, regular expressions, we get the entities right now. According, or the ones used by the tool, uh, emails, cryptocurrency accounts, hashes, URLs, IPv4, mm, ID numbers, and those people who want to contribute to the project, they can add their own. And yes, if you look in patterns, I think if you follow, I don't know whether it's two lines or one line, maybe enough, and you can introduce new ones. I don't know whether I dare to launch it from this terminal, but we've got this one which has been prepared. And what it's searching for in this case is in our website. Look at what regular uh, expressions or what entities identified through these expressions can be generated. And as we can see, we've got a whole lot of URLs, which are the links for the platform. And also at the top we can see, well, there's an email. 
Here we have things that we can identify uh, right now, but any idea, I mean, any additional expression could be introduced, could be included. And another of the tools that we have in the framework is MailFi. What do we do with this platform? Well, what we do with this tool is basically, given the username and the aliases, we can verify whether those emails exist within the platform. So we've got Gmail, Hushmail, 186, 163, 189, CN, Foxmail, QQ, Yandex, and yeah. Why is this valuable? Well, once we've checked the email, what we can do is import it to Gmail, for example, and then tools such as Facebook and Twitter, or the email manager, they can identify which ones exist on Facebook and Twitter. And then we would have a relationship which is quite, uh, quite strong between a user and an email. So it, on the basis of an, uh, using an alias, we look at whether it's linked with email boxes. And so no, now we're not looking on social platforms using an alias. We're trying to identify emails in order to then look for them in Twitter, Facebook, and other social platforms, which will, uh, and quite a few allow that, they will allow us to import their contacts and check whether they have emails. And the search, you have to say that this, this search in Windows, because of problems with the dependencies and it might not work, it doesn't work, the issue has been identified when it's been sorted out, we'll update it and we'll load it. So it doesn't work well in Windows, but it does work in Linux and in MacOS. So, and what we're doing here is we're looking for the existence of an email associated with us in this case. Another of the tools is PhoneFi, which would check using phone numbers on spam lists and infotelefonica, sorry, in listaspam.com and infotelefonica.s. Here we have the video. So take, look, if you look at this uh, approach, it's exactly the same. We use this to look for usernames, but we can do this uh, on other platforms with other purposes. Here we've got listaspam.com to report phone numbers uh, associated with spam activities and so here we have the same approach if we have a well if we have the parameter we can look for the phone number and if we really do this well you can imagine that the engine behind it is is not exactly the same but it's very similar and we've looked for a phone number which appeared on that platform. It doesn't mean it's spam, it just means that on that platform which is spam, it appeared there. We just limit ourselves to what these uh, sites say and we can see comments from people. And if we want to search here, we would in introduce the telephone numbers which are linked to suspicious activities. And if we've got the use uh, with several users, for example, we've got 7,000 users, and you've got to analyze that, well, it's, it's something that's just not doable, even with an Excel sheet. So we've developed Explorify, which is a tool. And this hasn't been published yet. And what we're showing here are the names of uh, the users that we are working with and all of the information associated with them. As the video doesn't seem to work. But in any case, what's lo being loaded behind that is what we saw, the Excel that we saw before. And we're just facilitating uh, the query according to platform and such like. And here, for example, if we just click on Twitter, I would only, we would only see in the central part the users associated with Twitter, but not just Twitter. And here we could also ask to know only the ones that speak French and Arabic, or just Arabic, or the ones that are located in Spain and Turkey, or or the number of friends that they have, or the number of publications that they have. So this is a way that we can manage all of that information in a visual way. 
And here we're most interested in something that uh, yeah, if I mentioned at the beginning, you go to Namecheck. Namecheck will give us the possibility of checking in 80-something platforms, and we know it works, so we delegate to Namecheck, and that's it. But the research process, when it's focused on a particular field, sometimes we need to include platforms for certain contents that may be interesting for you. In this regard, through pretty easy wrappers program, we give the possibility to users and IT analysis units to include new platforms. It's just seven little steps. Yes, first we just need to change the platform name that we want to incorporate to the framework. Then we'll look at the search type we want to do, whether it's a phone search, a username, or name and surname, literally, which is other of the tools that we have integrated. And we know we need to change the file, the false to true. And if it's a Sufi, we need to look at the URL structure and set it there because that will be the query that will be done by the tool. And then to false whether the platform needs credentials. Sometimes future is okay, but many of the platforms need me to log in below to do the query. Seven steps. The next step will look at whether the platform likes dots or semicolons to generate users and then six the most important one which is the error message what we do with you Sufi is transfer the error message after we identify it and that allows us to check whether the user exists so that we don't get any false positives so as we said earlier facebook.com slash fbrezzo says the user doesn't exist so 404 not found the platforms tell the legitimate users that what they are searching for doesn't appear we use that to check whether the link is registered and last optional and this is the one we'll focus on next is the incorporation of attributes associated to usernames often we are letting a lot of information go associated with those usernames that we could be storing, but that's quite costly. And we should see it for all the integrated platforms, and that's the next step we want to evolve to. We do need to take into account that the platforms can make a mess when they update their graphic interface. In the next example, we had integrated one of the platforms as Lashdot, where we look for the i3 Visio alias, and it tells us this username exists. What is happening in an underlying manner? The Lashdot, the Lashdot platform had modified that interface. Instead of the former one, they had this one. So the user and 3 Vision did not exist on that platform, and this forced us to do it manually go to the slash dot wrapper and this was right yeah it's uh, mentioned earlier we have the platform name the URL that we can see here and here is a not found text so now the not found text was not this one but this one we could replace it but in this case avoid problems we add it to the array we save it close it, we go to the former file or folder, we're developing it manually, so we'll install it again. This is, I think, version 9.6. This is just two minutes in one go. This is how long it takes to fix it. Set up and build, set up and install. This is version 0.9.6. We're going to launch then a script that gave us an error message and say, okay, there's a new um, a user that didn't exist, or that existed, and now we don't get any results. So now we can use a new wrapper 
for a platform we haven't yet seen integrated, but we have identified it, though. Can you think of any platform or any forum? Great! Don't make it too difficult for us, please. But 4chan doesn't have usernames to do the search. Come on, let's do something easier. He's saying 4chan. Come on, do, make it a bit easier. I'll give you candy anyway. But please make it a bit easier. That's a bit more difficult because 4 Chang is assigned for people to publish anonymously. It's not associated with profiles, but on the publication you can actually write whatever you want. But there are not really pages there. It's not very useful. Okay, there was some hands raised. Okay. Segunda Mano, a Spanish website for different kinds of advertisements. What's it called? Is this one? Is the first one? Vibo.com. This one here. That one. We have met before, by the way. Well, we have another one that, that works for sure, just in case. But well, the first objective will be to identify a user who is publishing to look at the URL structure. So first of all, we want to look at the usernames. We need to go to a publication, for example, these seed for babies. So we need to check here. Can you register here? Yes, you can register. There's a platform where you can register, I guess. Who gave this example? Okay, thank you. Contact with... I don't know whether it's be useful because here we don't have a profile page, do we? Well, if you know about it, please come here. We just want to look at it live. Oh, you go to publish an ad, an advertisement, an advertisement, okay, see the advertisements, okay, the name of the advertiser is Esperanza, but let's try with this ID number, here we have an ID number, let's check whether there, they have a username numeration. If we add a one, no, it's not. It's not good. Maybe they're not correlated. This is quite interesting because we didn't have it in, on the demo, but we had identified some URLs that appeared on Mary Fora, where we called Huda Sufi. So let's go to the wrapper, to the file. It's good that you make it hard for us. Live. So, conflict credentials. Es habitual que muchas plataformas la web... It's quite common that many platforms are uh, redirecting URL. It's the one with the PID, with the platform ID, ID number. But some of them redirect you to a profile with an identifier. Many others, however, by playing with them, you can pass a parameter you or user or username and username to this. And it's good too. What well, we have here on the line are some structures and sometimes when you have photo coaches which is Spanish forum slash user minus username it works or for coaches.com in this case it's not for coaches but I just thought of it well and these are all the things that we found in the platforms we saw and these are patterns that do happen can this well this can be launched from the terminal but we will not launch it so let's try with Vibo 
slash u slash vibo slash u slash vibo slash u slash or slash members right here yes all this right here yes Let's see whether we can do it this way. What do we do underneath? I actually didn't copy it. Control C, copy. And what we do here is this. And if we write Esperanza, I don't think it will work, but in some platforms, did it work? Now we went back to the home, but we have identified some structures and when we do the query backwards, they do come up. We see slash user, users, slash page ping, slash hyphen, forum profile, PHP in interrogation mark mode, view profile, U. If you put that on a forum platform, in some platforms, you can do the search. So this is an underlying automated process to launch it sometimes. So, shall we do another one? Shall we go to the study cases? Okay. Let's do the user cases, because it's already 20 past 7 here in Madrid. So we suggested the study case of the Daesh terrorist group, which is interesting because this terrorist group expressed pretty radical content on the network aimed to spread fear and recruit people. So which are the initial questions of the analyst? when we suggest doing this research, mainly checking which networks are being used to get connected and which techniques are being used to spread that message, mainly in an automated way, and see whether they publish the origin of these profiles. So where do we start? Which is the starting point? The starting point is a, is a case from April this year where Anonymous opened their own war with Daesh consisting on the publication of several usernames on Twitter. So this was useful for us to identify people, but once those users are identified, you need to look at them and see in your opinion whether they are registered on Daesh. Because from all the, that list, many profiles were not registered on, on Daesh, they were not Daesh number, members. We actually did the, the research with the April later, but the information published about 10 days or one week ago shows profiles that initially are linked to radical content. When you, when you assess them, that's not necessarily the case. So we need to work with the sources and we need to be rigorous with what we see here. Sometimes it's good to quarantine or take this with a pinch of salt. So whenever we see the number of users that we're interested in, we launch Sufis to our platforms and then we eliminate the false positives. And then we look at their networks. This is one of the things that you named really well earlier. You look at who they are related to, their most common links, to join our list. And launch all those Sufis once again. After all that's done, as we were saying earlier, he will load them on the cyber entity platform and here we see how we can do queries say okay give me just those profiles named Chaudari or you show me the Twitter profiles that appear on Instagram. This kind of tool allows us to view the information that we have recovered 
in a massive way and we're working on it. Are we interested in adding ad hoc platforms? Yes. And we also want to enable the process for relationship establishment. We have a sheet here with the profile information that I can actually recover. And this type of, in of interface can be loaded with JavaScript. And if, we have, if you have worked with this type of library, it really allows you to speed up the process. It's, it's much more usable for the final analyst, for the user. So which conclusions do we get? Earlier we saw that they were using Twitter, but not just Twitter. There are FabSard, Twits in Cloud, and there was a 3.1% that had users on Skype, Instagram, Facebook, food spotting, and ASFM. And this is useful to monitor in a comprehensive way these platforms. What we saw here is that by assessing all the content published from these profiles, we saw they use Twitter as a quick message measure and then seeing and checking which platforms they were spreading their message to in a wider way. They were using Bluetooth, Facebook, Archive.org, and Mediafire, amongst others. It's funny that just faster dot it just paste dot it there are many others such as dot com dot org but they weren't using those they were just using in general these profiles they were linking the, the links to just paste dot it and in other investigations they check this and and prove this so the profiles we got were f of different types. What we can see on the x-axis is the number of friends, and the y, and the number of followers, and the number of the spheres and the number of publications. The size of the sphere is according to the number of publications. Some accounts publish a lot, but then there are lots of tiny accounts with tiny spheres, which means they don't publish much. They have many followers, and they're following many people, but they don't publish much. This, together with other elements we have seen on the profile creation dates, mainly when most profiles registered. We see how they register at the end of 2014, beginning of 2015. And then the username structures also matched. And these were the first hints they give you to reassess whether they could be using Vox for spreading radical content in an automated way. Here we can see how most Twitter accounts associated with that and to those families of active Vox were Gmail accounts. Why Gmail? Because Gmail, well first of all on Twitter we can register on many Twitter accounts and Twitter profiles, but then they can be managed simply with one Gmail mailbox. So let's say I have the account felixbrezzo at gmail.com, hello world, and with this account I can register one Twitter profile associated with that email account. And what I can do is create another Twitter account associated to felix.brezzo at gmail.com or f.felixbrezzo at gmail.com. So if you send an email to any of those accounts, you will get to my mobile phone my email and this is important because Twitter in this case didn't check whether the account had been used to the Gmail account which is the only one that we identify as doing this and it didn't identify whether it corresponded to the same mailbox. Several aliases are associated to one single mailbox so you can create different Gmail associated to one single Twitter profile. So another thing we checked was the characteristics of these accounts associated to these bots because they have the same number of friends and followers and also their registration date. Within a month, all the accounts, all the Twitter accounts were registered. And something that Austin, an Austin town analyst checks is the information published from these profiles. So here we could check that most of these 
accounts were based in Iraq, Saudi Arabia and Syria, but it was also based in the USA, France, UK, Spain and Australia. So here we could actually show the Twitter account password recovery. Yours? Shall we do yours? Sure. That's mine. We could do it on Twitter directly. But let's check what we were referring to with the information we are sharing about us. Maybe you can search with Febrazo. So it's showing us two things. It usually shows one. But since I have associated my Twitter account to my mobile, it's giving two pieces of data. He says that the two last numbers of my phone number characters is 58, are 58, and gives me a pattern of the password identified. This information is useful not to establish a solid relationship, but if during an investigation in attribution exercise we find profiles that give hints and that match this pattern first, and then that give us hints about the fact that they could be involved, we don't just have a line continuous line, but it may have many dotted lines and we may need to consider all the ones we have. In our way of working sometimes we do it this way, we have two entities and we have a relationship given by an email because we searched it on Skype or Twitter. We work this way on a continuous line, it's something solid, something we can assume as certain, or that is likely to be certain. If we have two entities where we are creating a relationship between a profile and a username, a same username on another social network, but it seems the username is very common, we're not too sure. Here we can have dotted lines. And if we later have some sort of hypothesis, happy idea, for example, something we want to check whether the evidence we're getting show well you're getting it wrong because this account doesn't any doesn't have anything to show. So here we reflect this with a dotted line that is more separate. If the thoughts of this whole research project converge we can change the dotted lines by these continuous lines and if there is a lot of evidence we can have analysis criteria and get much more solid conclusions. So let me show you another practical case that we presented for a tender, for a contest. And everything we have seen is the mass monitorization of users with different profiles and different networks. But very often we'll find that our objective will be monitoring or locating a profile on the network, such as in the case of this person, also related with Islamic State. This gentleman, his name is Denis Mamadou Gerard Crispert, his Islamic name was Abu Malik, his war name is Abu Talha Alamani, and his artistic name, because he was a rapper, was Disov Dog. Why are we interested in this profile? Because the State Department of the USA, I do apologize. I do apologize. Tools, apparently. Okay, good. To highlight our tool, we want to check whether we could locate this person on the network. This is from June 20 something this year, yes. Where was this interesting? Because there was a paper clipping. Maybe this person could have died in a war event in Syria, but it was contradictory because the USA was searching for him. 
I issued a search warrant. Shall we do it then? So let's check with the information we have from the form sheet. Let's look at the information we have. And how can we look at a search on this person? And this profile. Where is the information we have here? This is a sheet of OSINT public information in media that we didn't get from anywhere. It's from open source. What is here from what we mentioned earlier? Okay, I need the candy. What do we have here? Name and surname. We've got the name and surname. What do we do with that? We have the name and surname. And we can say, okay, we can do searches and generate candidate areas. With the name and surname, we can generate a candidate alias. What else do we have? Can we do it too? Yes, with the names that he gives himself in, on different platforms, like his Islamic name, his war name. Before someone was saying, well, what about the location? Where is he from? German from Berlin and this is interesting if at some point we find a profile where this information is associated to this location we can start establishing these continuous lines at some point maybe continuous lines or more consistent lines what else can we do here which other combinations elements what other transformations can we do with everything we've seen Birth date to do a combination. We use birth date to combine new aliases. I do apologize, here's your candy. You deserve some candy too. Anything else? Any other ideas? We have a lot of candy, please take some. Okay, up here. The groups and the organizations he belongs to. We can use that. Come on, you burn yourself some candy. Okay, earlier we said the, if this uh, football fan supporter, we can look at his football team, such as Athletic de Bilbao. Maybe you can have a platform on our automation tools. There is a forum from Athletic Bilbao. So maybe you could check athletic.com. In this case, we see that Deso Dog is his own, his stage name. So we have some potential there. We could do it, couldn't we? So we could look at the profile whenever it appears. So, date of birth, we know when he finishes his career as a rapper, the group. So from this, which tools can we start using? We don't have any aliases, some clues have been given. So first of all, we could can create candidate aliases if we start generating and doing combinations. The 225 combinations we have around, with the information we already have, which is a lot. All these combinations, I mean, by hand you're never going to do them. If you say otherwise, you're probably lying. So maybe we could leave it overnight and see how it, how it comes up the day after. So from personal data and through the aliases generator, we generated mass usernames that could potentially belong to him. What would we do here? We would search all those usernames on the username search tool in sources such as Skype, Usify. We could check whether we can have some sort of IP used to Skype. But the ideas don't always work well, but Maybe they can allow you to check online whether if you give it an Skype aliases, if they are connected, maybe they can give you an IP address. It's not so reliable, it doesn't always work. But if we found information on that topic, 
also generation of emails associated to these usernames that we have generated previously. And we could check whether those emails may have been hacked at some point and their possible hash. One of the things we had included here in the email search on platforms such as Hawaii and Pound, and there was uh, a Spanish one done by a Spanish guy, like I've been hacked dot es or dot com in Spanish. It's made in Spain, I think. So let's give it some publicity, some advertising. And so let's look at the results. The usuario. So if we, with the first name that we saw, Abu Malik, in Facebook, YouTube, and also a user of Hangouts, Hangouts, which could be uh, taking the photo into account, and then also with another name which he is using, which is Abu Talha Al Almani. And it's not that we looked at it because of the photo or we're looking for the photo, but we did find the photo there of the rapper associated with the profile. This is from, well, uh, from the 21st of June 2015. This um, guy was connected. And this is a photo of a profile. We don't know whether it's the correct one. I mean, we don't know whether it's him or not, but there is a profile created with his photo. It, it, I mean, it's relevant nonetheless, even if it wasn't him, because it could make you think that there is somebody there using the image of this person because he's well known in the world of music, because he's close to, uh, to these kinds of platform. Who have used Steam? Who have you used Steam? I think few of you have uh, recognized that. Okay, in Steam, well, this is the public profile part of Steam, and somebody's using this information. And if you can see here, I don't know whether you can read that out. Yes, this profile, what it is doing is encouraging other users to uh, carry out denial of service attacks. Uh, here, Blaze, the user Blaze is saying, well, again, Abu. I've made a non-believer website crash. I mean, you can't see very well, but the third one at the top, the, what the user place says, says I've, I've managed to, you know, attack, knock down, cr make it crash. And what Abu says is good work. Your next attack could be uh, against NSA.org. This is a profile which is, well, it's no longer available, but it's in a formerly public group which had the icon over there on the left of ISIS and 1,741 members. So that profile, that group, no longer exists. And if we ha see again with the name Abu Talha Al Halmani, there's a user there in Hangouts, and as Desert Dog, he has accounts um, registered in Skype. And well, in June, we had this. But at least now we've included a cyber camp. Well, we've improved it. You have to admit that we've, we've improved it a little bit. So here we've got the publication in Discus. Here we have the creation dates, and as we can see, uh, we'll fight in the name of God. This could be associated to this username. Uh, this username could be associated to this particular person. And then again, we've got Desodog G. Uh, sorry, Desodog G007 or 007. And these are ones that have been uh, gathered in the other investigation, in the analysis of users. And these sources are quite relevant or um, quite relevant for this group. And this is compared with other reports that are provided from other sources that talk about communication through these kinds of sites. But Desodog 007 or 7, are we going to prove that? I mean, I mean, I'm not going to test Desodog 007, so unless somebody else does it. So I mean, to get you know, to do that, this is a a good way of doing it. We've also got the Skype uh, username as well as Hangout, Hangout, and another user which could be associated with him. This could 
back up the hypothesis that it could be him because they were the letters of the name of his rap group. Yes, we saw some, I don't know whether we've gone past them, but we had Berlin, Dessodog Berlin, Germany. But, I mean, we need to have other elements, obviously. Uh, and we insist, we insist because we have to be as rigorous as possible. But uh, these are the indications that uh, open up or can lead us to open up areas or lines of investigation. Well, and here we have other usernames such as in YouTube or in Hangout. And this is something that has to be, we have to monitor. And often. We're not going to find information associated with that particular profile, but we may do in terms of his, um, you know, environment. So, for example, here we're looking for Jermaine Cuspert, his sister, who could also have been radicalized, so his brother. We can find this in Hangouts and also in Skype. Well, these profiles sometimes know that their exposure can uh, lead to negative consequences uh, and perhaps not by identifying them but identifying them by close uh, family or friends uh, and uh, Jumaine Cusp Cuspert had a relationship with this or dog account you know it may not be a uh, hundred percent clear but these are things that lead us and, and give us ideas here we have the timeline for the life of this person, how he has acquired new usernames, what he's been doing when he went to Syria to fight, when he was injured and presumed dead. And when we saw in 2015 that there were still accounts with a certain degree of activity on certain platforms. So here we have the conclusion of the analysis. We have said that, well, obviously we can't know whether that person is alive or dead, but behind there must be people using his profiles, perhaps to attract, can capture individuals or to disseminate the message of that terrorist group. So we were very careful. We didn't want to say whether he was alive or dead, and in the end I think he, he was. But right then, when you write the report, you don't know. You can say either he is alive or there are people who are using his accounts and his username. Uh, okay, it's 14 minutes left, but we had some um, sheets here. And the idea was that if we had installed the tools, we could give the sheets out. So maybe, first of all, if you finish the presentation with the demonstration, and we could leave time for some questions. Well, we had some profiles of people who had been involved last month related to terrorism and uh, uh, radicalism. And the idea was to try to search on our own and to try to find some kind of, or, or reach some kind of conclusion using our methodology. I'm afraid we're not going to have time. Time's run out, so maybe for next time. But it would be a good thing to say that there are platforms such as the FBI one, which, well, the FBI offers uh, possibilities for identifying I, information which or they, they, they um, appeal for information which can help to lead to arrests so if somebody did find information about these people we have the list of the uh, um, most wanted people and the rewards that they give sometimes as much as you know ten thousand dollars or here we can see on the right it talks about wanted persons We've got uh, these individuals that are um, wanted people, and this is the one which is the terrorist, one of the people involved in the terrorist attacks in Paris ten or two weeks ago. So if you find information on the network, 
you know, Interpol is calling upon people to collaborate in the search for these individuals. So, to give you a bit of time for questions, well, who is interested? Who could be interested in these kinds of tools? Well, above all, security forces in order to try to detect these radicalized profiles who could be also recruiting other people to, to send them to Syria to fight or also people related to human resources departments to check information during a recruitment process. In addition to that, advertising and marketing companies to detect unauthorized uses of their brands or their names. Pen testers also who in some way may be interested in looking at the attack vectors and to gather information and also private investigators in order to detect fraud in companies as well. Where were we at the very start? Two hours ago. Well, an hour and three quarters ago. So, what's the situation? Name check looks in 86. We check on 220. So, if any of you are really interested and you're really uh, keen to include others, you can include them. Uh, mails, we look at that as well. Do we look at telephones on two platforms? List of spam and telefonica.s, I think it was. Good. Is it easy to code? Well, we said yes. The seven lines. So, I mean, we help you in github.com in the website of the project. If you have anything that you're not sure about, any questions, well, people, people have written to us in recent year, in recent weeks, in fact, that we don't know, and they say it's not working. This goes wrong. It crashes with this. I don't know what's going on with Skype. And we get back to them as soon as we can, and we help them. It allows to search for in forum where you have to introduce user credentials as well as a script for the credentials and we do that as well. We can include additional wrappers, yes, if we have the name check and we want another, they're going to do that. Software, free software. Well, in this case, we've published it as free software. Anybody can use it. It can be copied. You can copy it at home. You can clone it and reuse it. And when we talk about free, not in the sense of free, you know, no cost, but the idea of free in as providing access to everybody, access to the open source. And here is the philosophy. Um, we like this because it, it's an effort that we've made and we would like this to serve uh, for others. So if you want or if you think this tool is useful for your jobs, for your work, then we are willing, you know, we're very open to any suggestions and anything you'd like to propose. We are interested in continuing with this project, so if you are interested in helping us, we'll be very pleased to listen to you and collabor collaborate. Any tests, anything, anything you want to suggest, we're open to that. And so now just a couple of minutes in case there are, uh, you want to ask any questions. Um, we're at your disposal. I hope you've, we hope you've liked our presentation. Questions? Any questions? Over there? Well, we'll give it to him after the question, shall we? Why Python? Well, why Python 2? He's asked us, why Python 2? Why Python 2 and not Python 3? Well, because there are some books. There are some bookstores which are only available on Python 2 when we can migrate that to Python 3 and also we've received information from people who know a lot about Python and we're going to trust what they tell us and so and we will migrate but for the moment it's stable so we well for the moment you know I think we can be satisfied with that the slides that you've showed today in the presentation, are they going to be available to be able to consult them? Yes, I don't think so. No problem. 
the streaming is uh, going to be hung on the YouTube channel. No problem. Any other questions? I haven't given you a sweet, but I will do when we finished. Uh. Oh, no. Okay, here down at the bottom. I'm sorry they didn't use the microphone. We collaborate with the Prospective Analysis Center in the publication of analysis, uh, strategic analysis, but that's nothing, nothing like this at all, completely different to this. Any other questions? Have you ever found anybody during your investigations have you ever found somebody that you were looking for? A real person? Well, you could. Yes, we have. There have been some cases in which the user, the user publishes private information and with that information from the profile, you can, you can get an idea of that. But, well, the search for users has to be uh, combined with other sources of information, other inputs, other parts of the investigation, the analytical side of things. But we could, yes, we could get there. Okay, well, if that's all, thank you very much to all of you. If you have any questions, then, you know, we've got our emails on the screen.